Hey, math students, Abby messaged me on the Light and Salt Learning Facebook page um, wanting some help with actually not the GED, but the high set test. So the high set test is just another high school equivalency test. A few states use it um, in order to grant that same uh, diploma that you would get if you take your GED. Um, if you want to know if your state uses it, you should go on to your state's Department of Education, Adult Education website, and take a look at what tests they accept. Now, the high set is similar to the GED, but they have slightly different focuses. So good news if you're taking the GED. I've never seen a question like this about the zeros of a function on the GED. Now, it is related to things we do on the GED. Finding solutions um, of a quadratic equation is certainly related, a very similar problem. But I wouldn't expect you to see this phrase, what are the zeros on the GED? But apparently it comes up on the high set. This is from an official high set practice test. And it also will come up in your college classes. So it is a useful thing to know. So let's go ahead and tackle it. First of all, what in the world are they asking me to do if they ask me to find the zeros of a function? Well, the zeros are the solutions. So we're solving, we're solving in this case for x, uh, when y, also known as f of x, guys, f of x and y are the same thing, uh, when y or f of x is equal to zero i.e. we're finding f of 0. We're finding the y value when we turn x into 0. Okay, um, there's another name for this, like if you were looking at it on a graph, we're not going to graph it today because that's not a skill on either the high set or the GED, graphing these kinds of equations. But when you get to college, you will also realize that these uh, zeros are also known as the x-intercepts. The places where your graph... So let's imagine I have a graph of a quadratic crosses the x-axis. So that's what we're looking for when we look uh, for these zeros, okay? The solutions when y is equal to zero, also known as the x-intercepts on a graph. Okay, so that's nice, Kate. Lots of lovely information, but how do you actually do it? So there is a challenging well, I should say a little more challenging way that you will learn when you're in college. And I think that's lovely. And it has to do with turning this f of x into zero. And then doing the work to solve a quadratic. But solving quadratics can be pretty tricky. It's not one of the things that I generally teach to students who are just looking at taking their high set or just looking at taking their GED. And the reason why I don't teach that is because you're going to find that on your test, the answers are multiple choice, which means I can use a guess and check method. <laughs> Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I love a nice guess and check method because whether you're taking the GED or the high set or any other standardized test, if you forget your methods, guess and check works. Okay, so remember I said the zeros of the function are the solution. So what I'm saying here are these are possible x values. Things that x could be in order for y to equal zero. So let's do that. Let's take this uh, function f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 24. Plug in each of these values for x and see if it gives us zero. Let me show you what I mean. So first I'm going to try negative 8. I'm going to plug negative 8 in everywhere I see an x, okay? Remember to use parentheses when you're plugging negative values into what we call exponential equations. So I put that negative 8 in a parentheses for the x, and then it gets squared. That's what I mean by exponential. And then I'll add the 2. 2 times what? Well, I'm turning x into negative 8 minus 24. Let's crunch these numbers and see if it really does give us a zero. That's what we're looking for. The zeros of the function will give us zero when you plug in these lovely x values. So I'm just going to plug it right into my ti. And you know, I totally should have checked, Abby, if you guys get a ti or some other calculator for the high set, but I didn't. So let's see, negative 8 squared. I'm not forgetting my parentheses, guys, or I'll get a different answer. 
uh, plus, ooh, I tried to type the wrong thing, <laughs> plus two, uh, open parentheses, negative eight, close parentheses, minus 24. And do I get zero? Uh, no, I do not. I get 24. That's not a zero of the function. No reason to check the other one. That's not going to work. Let's move on. Next one. Let's try, how about negative six? So again, I'll plug it in for x, where I once saw x, I'll plug in negative six, uh, square it, and then the plus two, again, times negative six. I'm trading out, I'm substituting every x for a negative six. And again, I don't have a lot of time here. I know the order of operations, I know how to square negatives and all that, but I'm gonna save my brain work for the algebra and do the calculations in my calculator. So negative six, six squared, don't forget the parentheses or you'll get a wrong answer, plus two times negative six minus 24. Guess what I got? I got zero. This is excellent. This is totally a zero, but I need and. I have an and statement here, so I better check four as well. Let's do it. So uh, let's plug in four. I don't really need parentheses when it's a positive value, but it's a good habit. So I'm just going to put them anyway so you guys can develop some good habits with me of plugging in numbers into exponentials using parentheses. And guys, when I say exponentials, I just mean when there's an exponent up there. Okay, so four squared plus two times four minus 24. Again, punch it into my calculator. Guess what it gave me? It gave me zero. It's a zero of the function. I don't need to move on, guys. Boom. That's the right answer. It's B. That's nice. <laughs> Okay, you guys, awesome. See, not as hard as it seems, but of course the trick here is understanding the language. If you don't know what the heck a zero is, you're gonna feel a little lost. But I just have to say this to you. Like I said, zeros won't come up on the GED. They might come up on the high set. They'll definitely come up in your college algebra classes. The deal is though, when you see some answers down there, <laughs> Try plugging them in. Even if you have no idea what the question is talking about, just try plugging it in and see what happens. It's very interesting that a lot of times students have a tendency to just say, I don't know this word. I don't know. I don't remember this concept. And so I'm just going to stop and give up. So this is the kind of question if I knew nothing about it and I was just feeling like really confused and lost, I would flag it um, and come back to it at the end of my test and try something. Try guessing. Try checking. Try plugging things in. Try seeing what happens if you use some of your tools. It won't hurt. Um, and when you're doing it at the end of a test, you don't feel like you're wasting time, so it's not raising up your anxiety levels. So yeah, see a totally strange concept? Guess any answer? Flag it. Come back to it when you're not feeling so rushed. All right, if you have any questions about this, any GED math, or I guess apparently I'm doing high set math now too, um, be sure to drop it in the comments and I will do my very best to answer it. And you guys, happy learning.